from the Toslowski Gymnasium here on the campus of Arlington High School, ACMI Sports presents Arlington High School Boys Varsity Basketball. Tonight, the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School host the Highlanders of Doherty High School. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Phelan. Happy to be joined by Kevin Fudge. And Kevin, Arlington comes into tonight's game on a bit of a losing streak. They've lost their last two games. They come into the game with a record. 13 and 5. Of 13 and 5, 11 and 4 in the league. We'll talk more about the league situation as this is a non league game tonight. Uh, Doherty comes into tonight's game ranked number 14 in Division 2 with a record of 9 and 7. So this should be a good matchup, a good test for the Spy Ponders in a non league game. Yeah, most definitely. And if they get their 14th win, that'll be more than last year. They were 13 and 7 to end the year. So. Arlington does have one more game remaining on the road, and as I mentioned, we'll discuss that more because that has implications for the league title. So getting ready here for tap-off, Arlington with their normal starting five of number 33, James Digman, number 22, Nico Tripotsis, number zero, Peter Clarity, number 21, Lincoln Fudge, and number 23, Caden Mills. The tip is controlled by the Highlanders. We'll try to get their starting lineup as best we can as the game goes on. His number one, Jamel Walker, who takes a nice little entry pass. And with the left hand laying it up and in is number 14, Joshua Reyes. Yeah, and Equal was ready to take the charge there, but uh, nice move by the Doherty player to just take it to the hole without avoiding the contact. So the first points of the game tonight belong to the Highlanders. And an interesting matchup here tonight get a little bit more into that as Dingman takes the ball into the ball, had a ball tipped away and now the Doherty player is ahead of the pack and laying it up and in is Reyes and Reyes has the first four points of the ball game. Yep, They're coming out aggressive, we got to match that intensity. I think this is going to be a defensive game as it looks like Doherty will pick up full court and we know Allington always up for a full court defensive challenge. Dingman around the rim and out on the jumper. Yeah, I think Doherty averages 59 and they give up 57. So low scoring games, defensive battles. We're in for another one tonight. Saw so number 12, that's Ryan Dennis that had the ball shortly there for the Highlanders. Also number 33, Dean Pullman. And the final member of their signing lineup is number four, Josh Romeo. And traveling, excuse me, number three, Josh Romeo. And Romeo there with the ball picks up the traveling violation. Usually when we get in transition, that kind of opens up our offense because we can be stagnant in the half court. But let's see if we can't, you know, run, run a play, get a bucket, get into the flow. Looking like man-to-man -man defense for the Highlanders. Long three by Lincoln. Fudge is good. And it's always nice when Lincoln hits his first one. Maybe good things ahead for the junior. Nice. Good defense there by Lincoln on the strip. The He's going to go all the way to the hole. Switches to nice. the right hand and lays it up and in. All right. So it's Lincoln Fudge five and Joshua Reyes four early on here as both teams have had only one player to score, but that changes right there yeah. with a nice little layup by Dean Pullman. Yeah, so Doherty does a great job. I mean, they can obviously have a half-court offense, but they, they're looking to push too, so got to be prepared off a made basket and lock in. A couple of early lead changes in this game so far. Five partners down by one, five and a half minutes to go first quarter. Mills fakes, drives, spins in, got the double team that he couldn't know about. And now here comes Walker ahead of the pack, but he'll slow it down for the Highlanders. Active hands by Doherty. Got to be more decisive with the ball. A nice little reverse shot there by Jamel Walker on the lay-in. And he has his first basket of the game. Coach of the Highlanders in his 15th season is Jermaine Chavis. Of course, the head coach for the Spy Pond is in his sixth season is Jack Woods. I thought this was going to be the last game at the Tozlowski Gymnasium, but I've come to find out that Allington will play here again next year as the gym will not be completed. Caden Mills with a nice move down low, lays it up and in. Fast pace, early action here so far. Darty leads it 8-7, 4.49 to go first quarter. I don't even know if we've had more than one stoppage in place. No, so no far. fouls yet. No, Any nice fouls? clean game so far. Yep. Yeah. Now the steal, a little double team there by Nico and Caden. Here comes Dingman. He's scoreless so far. He puts it up. No, they're going to say the foul occurred before the shot. It will be Allington ball on the baseline. First foul of the game for either team. 
and Nico Trapotis will inbound it for the Ponders. Huntington does a nice job swinging it around there, but the Gotta keep it to, moving. Leads it to an open shot keep for Nico Trapotis, nice. and he knocks right. it down. Right. Good ball movement, good decisive action by Nico. Open shot, take it. Ponders retake the lead, 10-8. We've had as many as four or five lead changes so far. Pullman, I mean, little jump shot is good. Authority. They're, they're moving the ball, it's really crisp. They're decisive with their action, so 10-10. Yeah, in a game Fair that result. we figured would have a lot of defense, it's been surprisingly high scoring, as you just mentioned, 10-10. Link it for three more, around the rim and out. Ball comes right back to him, fortuitously. Break on the baseline, they swing it around. Dingman for a long three is around the rim. Uh, that's a couple now for Allington that have gone around the rim and out. That's some good looks. Three and a half to go. Nice little drive there. And switching to the right hand, count the basket for Josh Romeo, and he will go to the line with a chance for a three point play. Yeah, Arlington's just got to match their intensity. You know, I mean, I think part of the reason why I might have had a couple of dips come out a little flat. You know, you, 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 you got to match the other team's energy. And, you know, if you're not having it, make, get a steal, get a rebound, fire your teammates up because Doherty's here to play tonight. And Doherty with that basket takes the lead back. Gone back and forth a couple times. Three point play, no, unable. And let's see if they're going to call a traveling violation. No, nope. oh, jump ball. Held ball. Was, uh, the free throw was missed, and a good job there by Dean Pullman. And Arlington play a tying it up on yeah, the Yeah, this just plays like that, though. You know, like effort plays, get on the floor, get some steals. Arlington ball on the alternating possession rule. Now the ball is knocked out of bounds. It remains spy ponder ball. on the shot clock. Trapos is going to try another three. Back rim on that one. Strong rebound <coughs> by Reyes. Excuse me. Little pull-up jump shot with the left hand. No. Rebound fought for. Caden Mills comes up with it. Ah. Ball stolen as he tried to get it to Clardy on the outlet. I mean, and then a nice idea. little layup. Good idea to get out in transition, but got to be cleaner with those passes. Reyes lays it, and he has two more. He has a half dozen. He has six of Doherty's 14 first quarter points. 2.43 remaining in the first quarter. Ponders down by four. Dingman into the paint. Again, a good help defense there in the trap. And going all the way to the rim and laying it in Excellent is Walker. Move. Having himself a game tonight. 16-10, biggest deficit so far for the Ponders. Caden Mills inside, gets it to Trapotis. Shoot that. Dingman's gonna take the three. He's gotta hit one now. Ooh, that one short on the Yeah, I think rim. Nico should have shot that. He's wide open. Ooh, nice little up and under dipsy do no good. Lincoln Fudge with the rebound for the Ponders. Break there for Allington as Doherty could have extended the lead to eight. And then Allington has to be really careful. He's throwing it down with authority is Jamel Walker. And Allington takes the timeout. They're bringing the energy. They're active hands. Really impressed with how, the way how Doherty's come out tonight. I think what Arlington has to be really careful of so far, Kevin, is when they take the ball into the middle of the court, there's always seems like there's a Doherty player on the backside who's coming over for a double team, and Arlington's lost the ball a couple times that way tonight. Right, we're used to seeing full court press, and this is the kind of the first time this team's done strictly half court, and they're pretty aggressive. They're aggressive on, on those screens, they're switching. So, you know, we obviously have our shooters we want to get going, but there's, there's time to take it to the hole, and you know, we got an open shot, you gotta hit it. So, still early, plenty of time, but just gotta, gotta match that intensity, bring the energy. Don't wait for the fight to come to you, bring it to them, so. And another thing that's blatantly obvious is the team quickness of this Darty team. Allington hasn't seen a team like this yet this year in the Middlesex League where they have so many athletic players mm -hmm. that anytime Allington player turns, there's another Darty player right. there right on top. And I think the key is you've got to be decisive. You cannot be tentative because right. you're tentative, you short arm the pass, they anticipate. So, got to dial up the intensity here. 
early timeout by Coach Woods. I know he likes to save those, but good timeout there. His team is down by eight. Allington did go to the bench during that timeout. As Alexi Trapotis is into the Allington lineup, as is the other Jackson thing they're doing, Don, is they're closing down. With, they, they've done, probably done some homework, and they know James likes to come off the curl and drive to the hole. They got another person right there, so he has nowhere to go. He's getting cut off right when he gets in between the foul line and the basket. And, you know, they, they're, they're, they scouted us really well, mm -hmm. playing really good defense. A nice little crossover there, the pull-up jump shot, back rim no. Rebound by Reyes. Darty went to the bench as well as number 15. Pat Dowd is into the game, and now a blocking foul is committed. That's going to go against number five for the Pongers. That's Jack Zambardino, his first, second on the team. Yeah, he tried to take a charge. It's one of those situations where you're, you're standing there, you're ready to take the charge, but the player slides, and you want an official to know that, hey, I'm here, and I'm about to get hit. But if you're not in position, I mean, it's going to be a block every time. Josiah Reyes at the line, just a sophomore. He has six. Make it seven of the Darty first quarter points. See, this will be a good test for Allenton because in the in the playoffs, if they play a team like East Boston or Charlestown or mm -hmm. some of those teams that have more athleticism mm -hmm. than some of the teams in the Middlesex League, this is what they're going to run up against, and they need to be prepared for that. Yeah, most definitely. Reyes hits both free throws. He has eight of the Darty 20. We can fudge for a long three. No. Darty looking to run. They just, oh, what a nice little entrance. That, that should look. be Allenton's ball. Yep. Great call yep. by the official. Excellent. Good hustle back by James to knock that. Off the defend, off the uh, attacking player's arms, and our ball. Great. Yep. Double touch there, Allington with the ball. 42 seconds remaining, first quarter. Allington, about a, it's at about a six or seven differential on the two clocks, I'd say. Yep. Both Trapoza's brothers are in there. As is in Lincoln, Fudge, Dingman, and Zambardino, the five for the Ponders. See? Another example quick of those hands. quick hands, anticipating the passes. Yep. I think it's going to have to take a long three. It looks like it's going to be off left. It is. Rebound fought for. Darty looking to push it with eight seconds to go. Three-point shot by Walker is good. Two seconds. Let's see if Allenton can get off the final shot. I don't know if Nico was aware. I don't, I don't think he was aware at the time. Yeah. I don't that's know that he would have had a great shot. Yeah. We had to give it to James. He's the master no, of the right? end of quarter shot. Well, that, that's the disadvantage <laughs> of having the clock only at one end. A lot of the other gyms you go to, they have True. clock at both ends, and when you only have it at one, you know. So now back in the day, you know, you as the visiting team, you got the choice what bench you wanted. So you would always go towards the clock in the second half. Right. Now the home team gets to decide, and you go towards your bench in the second half. So that's why Ellington sits on that bench. They have the clock for the second half. But I'll never forget, we played at Woburn, and this was uh, Arlington, we were in the GBL at the time, we were not in the Middlesex League, and Woburn was used to doing a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And our coach came up, was Coach John Cody, God rest his soul, a great coach, and um, he said, we're gonna, you know, it was just assumed that we were going to warm up at the other basket. Yeah. And we came out and we were ahead of them, uh, time-wise, so we were warming up on what they thought were their, was their basket to warm up on. So they come out of, the, out of the tunnel, the crowd's going crazy, and we're warming up on their basket. They start taking our balls and chucking them down the other end. And we went to the referees, we're like, hey, we have the choice, don't we, ref? And they said, yeah. And we said, we want to go this way. Yeah. And it was, I think it was you know, away from the clock in the first half, yeah. but uh, we totally freaked them out. I think they still beat us, though. <laughs> they were not happy. Yeah. But that was when the visiting team got the choice, and that's no longer the case. Yeah, right. But I don't know if you told Coach Woods that he was going to give up 23 first quarter points that he'd be very happy. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I think talk, the talk, talk about winning quarters earlier in the year. I mean, right. lost that quarter by a mile. And a shot up there is no good, but Allington commits the foul. Yeah, I, I want to say this game was tied at 10, right? Yeah. So Darty ends the first quarter on a 13-0 run. Zero yep, run. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Two shots here for Jamel Walker. And his first free throw rolls around and out. I mean, plus, you got to think about it. I mean, coming from Worcester, they want to get their money's worth, right? I mean, <laughs> they probably right. rode an hour and a half on the bus Friday afternoon traffic. Right. I mean, they're, they're, so, I mean, they're probably psyched to come here and show what they got. The Division II team coming up against a Division I team that's ranked in the top 30, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. 
Caden Mills back into the Ponder lineup. Empty possession, well, maybe not an empty possession as nice. Doherty oh. comes up with the missed free throw. A long three-point shot there is no good. Good box out. Good job there by Alexi Chapotzis. Caden might have got away with the travel there. He's gonna go coast to coast. Gets it to Lincoln Fudge. Lincoln with the hesitation up and under. No, alchin has been robbed a couple times on this rim in the first half. Lincoln once or twice, and um, James as well. Yeah. It's not falling for them here early on. There, good D, good switch. Defense by the Ponder, six seconds on the shot clock for the Highlanders. Good D by Caden, good D, good D. No foul here, two seconds on the shot clock. I don't even know if they're going to get a nice. shot. Shot clock violation, that's us. Yep. yep. Ball's knocked out of bounds by James Digman, but the shot clock did go off. The shot clock horn did go off, so violation there, Arlington Ball. Yeah, so I mean, if you notice, Doherty's been getting a lot of their buckets in transition, so if we just lock down on that half court D, Get some socks, get some buckets of our own to game again. That's a three there. You could, we, from our vantage point up here high above courtside, you could just tell that thing was going down. Lincoln now has eight of Arlington's 13. Cuts the lead down to 10. 23-13, the Highlanders. On the drive, I think he just lost control of that basketball. Yeah. No. no, I think it was tipped. Okay. But you notice how on their drives, he's got a clean lane to the hole, and we're not bringing over that second defender to cut his lane off. So uh, maybe it's an adjustment that we can watch the film on, but we're giving him a free run at the hoop. Ooh. But before the shot, they're going to get Lincoln Fudge on a holding foul, and that might have been a good foul there by Lincoln as Dari player was going to get an easy shot at the basket. Yeah, you gotta be careful though, because when you get that second foul, you're going to the bench for that's the rest right. of the half. That's so. true. I think that's his first, second on the team. Three point shot by Reyes is short. Rebound squeeze fought it, for. It. Don't and foul, don't ooh, reach, don't reach. I think they're linking the same thing with that little hug foul. And that's going to be his second. I believe they're going to get him on that. They do. And next sound you hear is going to be the sound of the horn. And the sound after that is going to be Lincoln Fudge sitting on the bench for the remainder of the first half, most likely. It's been Coach Woods' philosophy for the entire season, yeah. I believe. Unfortunate there for Lincoln. Fudge is pretty much the only one that has it going for the Spy Ponders offensively. Now Reyes takes it in the paint. And there's the help defense you were talking about, but yeah. unlucky for Arlington as the loose ball went right to yeah, but that's, senior Pat Dowd for a basket. Yeah, but that's the idea. That's what we got to do. We got to communicate. Got to talk. Kane with a power move. No. Rebound by Reyes. Zambardino went for the steal, didn't get it. Well, they're gonna get James, that's, 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 yeah, his second. that's hard, that's rough. That's you know, his second. He, from up here, it did look like he hit him in the arm, but I'm wondering if that time the official can just hold that whistle for a second. The ball went right to another Darty player. Yeah, the you thing know, is, the players have gotta know, like yeah. if, they, if they're calling it tight, we got four fouls on us now. I know. Fountain so, will be in the penalty for the remainder of the second quarter. Yep, next foul. Darty's committed zero fouls in the second quarter. So and I think, yeah, for James, here comes right? Peter. He's yeah. come out too. Uh, I, to careful. Oh. Ooh, they got a, James almost got a third one yeah, there. Yeah. Three point shot is no good. Rebound fought for. Darty does a nice job. Comes away with another offensive rebound. 25 13. Highlanders coming up on five minutes remaining in the first half. And I believe with the next substitution opportunity, James Digman will check yeah, out. Yeah, Peter's coming in for him. Up. It's going to be tough without Allington's two best offensive plays for the remainder of this half. They're going to have to just do what they can to survive. Ten on the shot clock. Reyes switches to the right hand and lays it up that's and a, in. Yeah, that's going to be a warning for them for tapping Correct. the ball out. Yep. I'm impressed with the sophomore guard, Josiah Reyes. He has ten points and Darty Memorial High School has their largest lead of the game, 27-13. So he's leaving James in. He is, um, yes. You know. Kind of have to. He got to have to. You can't have just, both him and Lincoln on the bench. He's just got to be careful on the drives, though, because if he gets an offensive, yep. yeah. You got to be aggressive, but you can't be too aggressive right here. Jonas Burrell, number four, checked into the Ponder lineup. There's James' little pull-up jump shot, back rim, no. He fights for yeah. it. Now Darty looks to run. 
crossover there. It's number five. That's, that's a Prince backcourt Duckley. violation. Duckley. And we'll have a backcourt violation. So that was smart by James to pull up, to not take the action all the way. That, that middle, right between the foul line and the basket, as his bread and butter, right. just go to that. We've talked about that all season long, Kevin, that he is a really, really good mid-range shooter. Scoreless so far tonight, though. And certainly Arlington needs some offense from somebody. And with Lincoln on the bench with two fouls, going to rely on James to get them back into this game, coming up on the halfway point of the second quarter. Caden Mills is going to try a little pull-up jump shot. The rebound. James with the rebound, puts it up, okay, and okay. he's fouled on the two. play. He'll go to the line for two. Now a chance for James to get on the score sheet and cut into the Arlington deficit. First team foul for the Highlanders in the second quarter. Arlington has committed four. Two shots for the quad captain, James Dingman. So, interesting move by Coach Woods. Ooh. Looks like he's going to put back Fudge in the game. Yes, he does. And the first free throw by James Dingman is good. But I kind of understand this move because you don't want it to get away from you. You're trying to keep, you're trying to keep it to 10 or less by halftime. So I understand the move. Just hope the player understands the situation and can get through the half without another foul. Fudge in and Jonas Burrell out for the Spy Ponders. James Dingman hits both free throws and a timeout call by Arlington. Yes, yeah, so what I've observed is when um, some of the players have multiple fouls, coach, the coaches will see who is the biggest offensive threat on the other end, and they'll try to put other players on them. Oh, sure. So they're not going to pick up a, a cheap one. But the players have got to know you can't reach. If you're beat, give up the layup. Sure, the coaches will be mad, but there's no sense in exacerbating the, getting a foul and an and one. Okay? So situational awareness, whole another half to play, keep moving the ball, you know, keep them out of transition. And, you know, on a, even on a made basket, the, the, the thing was, and the made baskets, we were getting beat back. So, you know, you make a basket, hustle back, right? So, points of emphasis, and, and it's good that we're kind of working all these kinks out before we get the playoff start, because the tournament starts, one and done. So, one you know, done. better this happens now, learning lesson, fight back, make it a game. Allenton has chopped four points off the, the lead. They were trailing by 16, they now trail by 12. And as you mentioned, Kevin, one of the key things in coaching and psychologically, you really want it to be 10 or less by the half. So Arlington goes into it more of a, a zone press. We haven't seen that much of that this year. They tend to play more of a man-to-man -man press. Right, so now they're playing zone, though, 2-3 two, zone. That, that's probably to protect the players a little bit. You exactly. don't see a lot of zone from Arlington. And that's going to help out with the foul trouble. And I don't think it'll James help out with the driving lanes, too, though. Sure. Nice. Steal by the Ponders. Here comes James Dingman. All the way to the basket, tried to throw it down, but no good. The ball's knocked out of bounds by Alexei Trapotsis. One of those where a layup will do, but I know he wants to get his teammates hype, but need that bucket. Yeah, rough and safe. You don't get any points for the missed dunk, unfortunately, but um, yeah, we could have used that deuce. 322 remaining, first half. Ponders down by 12. Been like a 2 3 zone for the Ponders. Three-point shot there nice. around the rim and out. Two hands. Here comes Lincoln Fudge on the break. Let's see if he can go coast to coast. Well, let's see if they get it for a charge. Oh, They're shoot. gonna get it for the block. Break there for Allington. I think that call could have gone that either way. Gone either way. I was, I was actually thought he was gonna call a charge. I was watching the defensive play. It looked like he was doing a pretty good job establishing the position. You know what though? I think he was a little too close to the rim. We don't have the circle here. No, we don't. So non-factor. But. Uh, I'll tell you, I got to give Coach Chavis a little bit of credit. He's asking about the call, but he's not losing his mind. That, you know, you'll see coaches losing on a call like that. Yeah, no, especially with the one of Allington's impact plays. That'd yeah. be foul number three on Lincoln. So they get that call. That's a big, that's that a big difference. That changes the game completely. So, yep, yep. yep. Well, maybe we'll look back at the 303 mark in the second period if we come back and make it a game and win as a pivotal moment. Now, let's see, Lincoln knocks down one of two. Nine on the evening for Lincoln, and the ponder deficit is 11. Under three minutes to go. Three-point shot here is long. Caden Mills with the rebound. Let's see if Allenson can get it down under 10. Lincoln's going to take the little pull-up. Jay, 
Back rim, no. James Dingman with the rebound. He's going to take a fadeaway three and hits it. I can tell that one's good from up here. James Dingman for three. And the Ponders are now down by eight. But here comes Darty back nice. the other way. Good unable defense. Good contest. To make the layup was Darty. And here's a chance for Alex to cut further into the lead. Caden bottled up Ooh. and had the pass That's stolen tough. away. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And Reyes okay. is called for traveling. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if he was going to switch to the zone because, you know, when you have a team like this who's running and gunning and they're getting everything free, like, you know, make them think. Switch it up a little bit. And as you said, it takes away those driving lanes. And I think most of Darty's points have been at the rim. Exactly. They haven't hit a bunch of threes, I nope. don't think. Nope. Force them to beat you from outside. If, you, if they start hitting threes, you tip your cap, you move on. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Let's see. Away from the ball. It's going to be a holding foul. It's going to be called against number 12, Ryan Dennis. Another sophomore for Darty and getting significant playing time. But he'll check out of the Highlander lineup, and he's yeah. replaced by number 15, I mean, we Pat got a bucket Dowling. here. We're, we're down six, oh, yeah. or down five, so. Lincoln's going to tell you it's going to be Tough. off right. And the rebound goes to Darty. Wellington still down by eight. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Pull up jump shots coming to be in. I thought it was long. Nice. Jamel Walker with two more. Now he has 11. So Walker and Reyes accounting for 21 of the 29 Highlander points. Minute 40 to go. That's going to be. Should give him four for that one. No. And unable to get it lower than eight. It's back up to 10 with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Fun first half, but Arlington down by 10. That's a long three. No. Look up. Here comes Caden. He has a notion. He's going all the way. Right. Way to force the action, though. Way Walking to force the action. Foul. They're going to call it on the floor. No shot. But the next one will be shooting. That's right, those team fouls have caught up. At one point, Allington had four and Darty had zero. Now both teams have committed four, so both teams will be in the bonus for this final minute 12 of the first half. You see, it's really important now that Lincoln and James don't pick up that third foul in this final minute. Dingman on the drive, gonna take a little pull-up jump shot That's and it. hits. That's his money right, right. there. James Dingman cuts it down 29 21, under a minute to go. First half. Dingman with seven, Fudge with nine. That looks like more like a yeah, two three, I guess. One, two, two almost. 45 seconds to go, first half. Ooh, a little switch to the left hand by the big fella, Pullman. I like Pullman's game so far. Ooh, you could see that one coming a mile away. But unfortunately, the referee got in the way and a steal, a turnover there for Allington. We'll take it. One shot, one wow. shot. Hold for one shot. That would have Hold been an one. easy bucket for, for one. Darty. James is going to take a pull up three. He's feeling okay. it. Right. And he knocks it down. Right. James Good Dingman team. for three. No foul, no foul, no foul. That, no that foul. clock on your screen is wrong. There's actually 13 seconds to go. Spy Pond is down by five. Darty will hold for a final shot. Six Do seconds to go. Do not foul. Long three is short. Rebound goes to. Alexi Trapos is far as going to launch it at half court. It goes oh, in. Oh, no, yeah. It but after, it was after, it was after the after. buzzer. After. Wow. Wow. Peter Clary launched one from the attack line of the volleyball court. Three-quarter court, yeah. maybe, maybe more. It went in, no. but it was clearly I, after, the buzzer, after the buzzer, and it will not count. Yeah, all three of them were. All three of the refs were in agreement. We've seen some games uh, now that they're using three refs in, uh, in preparation for the tournament, where some of the one ref might say yes, the other two might say no, but they were in uniform. Like that was no good. So <laughs> good, good to see from the refs kind of yeah. come together on that one. Good point. But but it, but it, it goes to show you though, like we're, it, it wasn't. The game could have gone either way. I mean, we're down 16, and but locked down on D, switched it up, you know, got some confidence, got to the foul line, right? We didn't get to the penalty, but we got some foul shots, right? That stops the game, stops kind of the rhythm of them just running and gunning, and it's right there. So now we're down 29-24. The only downside is we got, you know, two players with two fouls. That's but, okay. You know, it's all right. 
I'll tell you. <laughs> Great defensive adjustments by Allington in that second quarter after allowing 23 first quarter points. Doherty scores only six yep. second quarter points. Allington outscores Doherty 14 to six All right. to find themselves trailing by only five. So one quarter piece. Half. So go in two quarters, take this game. When we'll start, we'll finish with one more win than last year. So it's right there for them. The score at the end of the first half. Doherty 29, Arlington 24. Kevin and I will be back with the second half action.
And getting ready for second half action, Don Phelan along with Kevin Fudge. And Kevin, a nice second quarter for the Spy Ponders. As I mentioned at the close of the first half, they outscored Doherty by a score of 14 to six to cut what was once a 16 point deficit down to a very manageable five at the half. Most definitely, and I think the thing is you can't get 16 points on one possession, right? right? So you gotta take it one possession at a time. If shot's not falling, keep shooting, take it to the hole, force the action, get some fouls, stops the clock, stops the game, right? So I think this, the, the biggest play to me was this, the non, the block charge that mm -hmm. they called a block on instead of a charge, which kept a foul at two instead of three and then switch into a zone defense uh, instead of man-to-man. -man. Yeah, Kevin, a couple things you mentioned there. We saw a change in philosophy with Coach Woods here in this game. Both James Dingman and Lincoln Fudge both picked up two fouls in the second quarter. He had both of them see significant playing time with those two fouls. That's number one. Switching to the zone was key, too. Uh, Arlington getting back into this game as well. And so you wonder if he did that because in the playoff, in the tournament, like if, if either of those two players get two fouls, they're most likely going to stay in the game. Right. Right. So I think he wants to help them understand, all right, you're not coming. It's not an automatic come sit for the rest of the half because in a tournament game, we need all hands on deck. So you got to police yourself. We're underway in the third quarter. An interesting matchup here tonight as Arlington playing a non-league game against Doherty High School out of Worcester. Allenton on the first possession turns it over, going all the way to the basket is number 12. That's Ryan Dennis, and Ryan Dennis with his first basket of the game, and that was a pretty nice shot. Not the way nice you want to start the half after kind of closing it out with that run, so let's see if we can get it back. Allenton with their regular starting five, Lincoln Fudge number 21, Peter Clardy number zero, Caden Mills number 23, James Digman number 33, and Nico Trapotsis number 22. Dingman on the spin move put it up. No little bit of contact there. They allow play to continue. And here comes Dennis. Yeah, they're looking to run. They're looking to run. Yeah, he pulled that one back. I thought he was going to go to the hole again like he did earlier. Here's Reyes for three. No. Clardy with the rebound. Nice. Caden Mills ahead of the pack. We need this too, Caden. And he lays nice. it up and in. All right. Get back on D. 26 for Arlington now. They trail by five. 31-26 Doherty. It's kind of beating them at their own game, right? Leaking out. And Peter with the nice rebound and good look. Allington back to the man-to-man, -man, but with help defense there. You saw Lincoln kind of helping and hedging on the Doherty player. And now he covers on to his own man. Well, a nice little pass there, a little pocket pass, putting mm. it up no. And I that's going to be on Clardy? Peter, I think so, yeah. Peter Clardy will pick yeah. up that foul. So you say, what's Allington doing playing a team from Worcester in a non-league game? And it's very interesting. I found out before the game that Darty High School is Coach Mike Palladino's alma mater. Oh, yeah. And we went out to Worcester last year. I forget, was it, uh, we didn't play North, uh, the eventual state champs. Um, it was they Worcester, played Worcester South, South last, last year. year. Mm -hmm. Correct. And a shout out to Coach Pal, as this free throw was attempted and made by Reyes. Coach Pal was inducted into the Worcester Public Schools Athletic Hall of Fame last year. So a proud Highlander and some nice recognition there for Coach Mike Palladino. Most people call him Coach Pal. Well-deserved recognition. Good Great guy. Two free throws there by Reyes. He now has a dozen high point men for either team in this game so far. And Allington finds themselves down by seven. They've given up two points off the first half lead. Oh, wow. Don't foul, don't foul. What great hustle there. And what a nice play by Ryan Dennis. He, he had the steal, and then Lincoln looked like he had a chance to get it, and then just Ryan Dennis just got an extra hand on it, yeah. tipped it away from yeah. everybody, and then he was and able to retrieve at that point, you're beat, it. so. Oh, yeah, he's just so quick. Now Lincoln finds himself down by nine. It's going to be off. Lincoln, excuse me, uh, James Dingman for three. And we've played two minutes so far in the third quarter. Arlington now down by nine. Alexei Trapotz is at the table getting ready to check in. The D. Baseline drive. Now Reyes avoided the contact and, but missed with the left hand. Lincoln Fudge is going to go all the way nice to the move. 10 and lays it up and in. That was nice. He saw that he wanted to pull the trigger on the three, but if it's not falling and you're not confident, then take it to the hole. Good things happen. A nice little dump pass there. Mm. Peter Clardy is going to pick up foul number two in this third quarter. Yeah, I think Alexi was coming in for him anyway, so. 
Dean oh, Pullman with the see. fake got Peter up in the air. And Peter commits the foul and Pullman will go to the line for two. Yeah, Coach Woods' rotation is usually uh, the brother for brother switch for the Trapotis brothers. And then looks like Jack's gonna come in for Peter. First free throw rolls around and in for the senior center, Dean Pullman. So Clarity and Nico Trapotz is out. Jack Zambardino, number five, and Alexei Trapotz is number 12 into the Allington lineup. And Pullman calmly knocks down both free throws. Nice form for a big fella there. Two for two. Lead back up to nine for the Highlanders. They could fudge for three, I think it might be short, no. Nope. Good rebound. Caden with the rebound. Shovel with pass inside to Jack Zambardino. Zambardino puts it up and nice. in. Good play. Good and play. Now Arlington will take a timeout. So Zambardino with his first basket of the game. Arlington takes timeout number three. They only have two remaining. So as somebody who's seen all the games this year, I could probably say with confidence one of the reasons why we had a little dip is, one, free throws. And you notice Doherty's been good at the line tonight, all, all their players. And then two, rebounding. The Lexington loss, unfortunately, just got crushed on the glass. So it's great to see Caden in there and everybody else. James, I think, had a good rebound. Peter had a good rebound. Um, rebounding is not just about height. It's not just about arm length and wingspan. It's about desire. It's about boxing out, angles, anticipation. And so we, we kind of shore up those two things. We'll be, out, we'll be in good shape. So I haven't seen the Spy Ponders in a couple weeks. I know they played last Friday, but I was away on vacation. But Allington had won on the sixth. They won again on the ninth uh, at Woburn, excuse me, that against Woburn. That was a home game. But then since then, they went on the road for two games. And they lost at Waltham 68-67, a one-point game mm -hmm. there against a Waltham team. I think that's pretty highly ranked. Yeah. And then you mentioned the Lexington game, which they lost 66-58. Spy Ponders, 13 and five. And specifically overall. on that, on those, on those free throws. Um, uh, can Jack get that? Not the quite. Belmont game, we've had six missed in a row. We lost by like three points or two yeah. points. Sorry. Yeah. So, Little shot there by Pullman is good. Pullman now with four second half points, and Allington just can't quite crack that 9-7 deficit. They score, they get it to seven, and then. Darty comes back and scores and gets it back up to nine. Ooh, almost a steal there. Yeah, can't be lazy with those passes. Oh, there's just too much quickness on this team. Caden Mills makes a nice. strong power move, lays I mean, it up and in. That can find space under. Nice. Darty tried Caden. to just get that ball after the made basket and rip it and run. Foul! But they didn't convert. Now Allington is fouled. The foul was committed by number one, Jamel Walker. <laughs> They're not gonna miss that one, Kevin. I don't know, Relax. sometimes, sometimes these refs. They're not gonna miss that one. You know, I'm a brother, you gotta be, I have to be nice to the refs. These are my brothers down there. I'm, <laughs> try to pick my spots on the refs. <laughs> Those are not the obvious ones, man. <laughs> Zambardino, baseline drive, he has a little area. Try to dump past some Mills. Mills might've got hit on that. No, now Mills just gonna power it back right. up and he's just too strong. Pullman might nice be a little play, taller nice than him, but Caden powered it over. Steal by Dingman. Pull up jump shot. Yes! And a Let's timeout go. called by Doherty. All right. Great little flurry there by the Ponders. We've had a couple of now power moves by Caden Mills down low. For whatever reason, Dean Pullman, the big guy, he just puts his hand straight up and just lets Caden power right through him. Then Dingman had the steal, went back into the paint and yeah. scored, and now Allington trails only by three. And I think you can hear some, you can hear Lincoln shouting in the corner, Caden, Caden, hit me for the three. <laughs> but you know what? Caden's got it down low. Best thing's gonna happen, either he's gonna make the basket and one or get fouled. So I'm all I'm all for that. First dart to take their first time out of the game. The funny thing is too, I think in coaching you tell your kids not to bring the ball down. But I think Caden on the on the first attempt could have actually brought it down and then gathered and got back up and scored, but he caught it off the rim and then just shot it. And it was like, so I'm glad to see his hard work rewarded down there because, you know, he's fighting for those balls. And he, he, he can squeeze it up. He's shown that he can squeeze it up in all kinds of traffic. So good work by him. Allington facing now their shortest deficit in quite some time. They're only down by three. It's a one possession yeah. game. I think last time it was 13 to 10, so. Yep. Halfway through the third quarter. Ooh. Well, looks like Darty has the numbers here as Allington double team for the steal, didn't get it. Yeah. Now going coast to coast 
and laying it in. That's number one, Jamel Walker. Walker now with 13. Lead back up to five for the Highlanders. To help him out. Dingman spins, he got hit Ooh, on that. Man. He's going to go to the line for two. Looks like that foul should go against number 15, Pat Dowd. Second team foul for the Highlanders. Both teams have committed two team fouls in this third quarter. Yeah, I wonder if the half court press would be better than full court press because once you break it and their players get full speed. They're gone. They're gone. So I might switch to half court press. First free throw rolls around and out for James Dingman. Yeah, see, this is the thing. These are like just valuable points. It doesn't seem like a lot right now, but when you, you know, you, you lose a game by like two or three and you go back and you look at your chances to get easy buckets, you got to knock down your free throws when you get them. Yep. One of two for James. 13 on the night. Ellington down by four. Ooh. Alexei did get enough of it's it. It's off now. his foot. It is last touch okay. by Dart. It's Arlington ball. Now Arlington can cut it to two, and perhaps one with a three-pointer. Prince Dukuli, the junior guard, back into the Darty lineup. They're using Alexei as the primary ball hand on this possession anyway. Caden, this time it was blocked. Okay. And they're gonna get 15 again. Two. Pat Dowd picks up two fouls in the matter of about a minute. And that'll put Caden Mills at the line for two. I think the hard thing is too, when you see a player with a couple fouls and the coaches are encouraging them to be aggressive, it's like you, you're kind of getting mixed signals because they're like, don't pick up the third, but dive on the floor. Yeah. You know, so it's like. Caden's uh, first free throw is back rimmed. I think at this point, 303 remaining third quarter, you're in a position now where you, if you have two fouls, you can play your regular defense. Yeah. You know, if you pick up your third, you don't want to, but you're still pretty safe. Yeah. You're more than halfway through this third quarter. Alexi tried to keep that missed free throw alive, could not as it was gathered up by number 12, Ryan Dennis. Yeah, that's that quickness Ooh, we talked about. No, rebound put back, no. Dardy gets a third chance at a nice pass, pass and laying it up. And no, he missed it. Dowd missed it. And now Dowd's in trouble. Kicks it back up top. A three around the rim and uh, in. Ooh, uh, Prince DeCooley with a big Those are the possessions that just, that just hurt. You know, give him three chances to score. Yep. Got to squeeze that rebound. All of a sudden, Ellington finds themselves down by seven again. Let's see what we have here. All right. Holding foul that is committed. First. Yeah, but did they already put that team foul up there? Or is that going to be five? No, nope. no, okay. I, they already did. They well, did. Yeah, I was hoping it was team foul number five. But right. His only team foul number four is Jamel Walker picks up that foul. Team's fourth. So That's I'm only. Like, is that one on Walker or two? I'm not sure. James has a lane. Oh, and he lays it up and in. James Dingman to the rim and puts it down. And Allington now down by five. You gonna get Caden on a foul there? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that Caden's had many fouls tonight. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of the scoreboard operating putting the individual fouls up there. Yeah, right. Team foul number so three on three the corner. Three for us, yeah. Wellington goes back to the zone. That's, That's us. At least backcourt, if not more. Zimbardino tracks it down. Zimbardino up and oh. under. Couldn't get it to go. Good try though, good try. Absolutely. Does that loose ball? It's off his foot. And again, so quick as darted to those loose balls. Yeah. Not Allenton had a chance for that one. Mm. Really? Yeah, it kind of looked like Jamel Walker was losing his footing uh, on his own. Well, you said you're, those are your brethren. I mean, I would have <laughs> called a walk, but you know. <laughs> for I think they're gonna get Caden on that one. So Caden I know has at least two. And now he's discussing it with the official now. Yeah, I think he, I think the player lost his balance and slipped, but it's one of those bang bang plays. There you go, ball don't lie. Yep, first free throw's no good. Jamel Walker, a junior forward, has 13 points tonight, high point man for the Doherty Highlanders. 
And he hits one of two. 45, 39, under two minutes remaining, third quarter. James working hard, but he's being harassed by Jamel Walker. Nice. Makes, gets free from him and just enough space to take that foul line pull up jumper. And James is starting to feel it a little bit. 17 on the night. Ponders down by four. Coming up on the final minute, a little bit more than that. Minute 17 left in the third quarter. 45 41. The Darty Highlanders with the lead. Yeah, make him think about it. You know, like cut off those driving lanes. See? Reyes pull up. Jump shot from the baseline, no. Good rebound. Dowd kept it alive for the Highlanders, but Arlington comes away with it. James fakes, drives, followed uh. up on the baseline, ball staken away by Jamel Walker. Now Walker goes between the legs, now That's Walker off his loses foot. That's it. Us. That's us. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, this ref got it, he's got it, he's got it. He saw it was off his leg. That's white ball. Good Indeed call, ref. Is. Excellent ball. work. Well, that's where the third ref came in handy. Oh, most definitely. There'd only been two refs. That ref wouldn't have had the help from the single side ref, so yeah. that worked out really well. No, nice. Yeah, they've been working well together. So both teams have four fouls. Next foul, we're shooting. Mm -hmm. Two. With the new rule this year. Caden Mills is going to go all the way with the left hand. No. Good Alexi crash by Lexi. Good it. crash. Good crash. Nothing. 35 seconds to go. Race ah. puts it up. No but he did just enough to get James off balance and James picks up the foul. Third on James Dingman. Yeah, but like you said, if you pick up a third end of the third quarter, I mean, I'm sure coach would have preferred not to see that, but you know, he'll live with that. 32.1 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Josiah Reyes at the line for two and his first free throw is good. I mean, that's the difference right now. They've hit their free throws, we haven't, so. We're right in it. 13 points for Reyes. So Arlington can 14. hold for the last shot. 32 seconds left, so. Yep, shot clock is off, as Kevin just mentioned. Caden's going to kick it. Hey, working around Lincoln Fudge for three. He has not really touched the ball much here in this third quarter. Now he's going to take a foul line, pull up jump shot, and knock it down. Wasn't the final shot, but it was a basket no foul, for the no Ponders. No so we'll take it. No foul. It's all right. We got eight seconds. Push. Dowd with the basket. Oh. Long shot by Lincoln. No. Allenton could have advanced that a little bit further, but they got a shot off. It didn't go, and Allenton will find themselves down by six. It's like we into lost the that quarter, quarter by a point. Correct. So, right there. I mean, I think the team's playing well. Crashing the boards, playing good D. Just, like Again. you said, I mean, I think it's Doherty's athleticism. I think it's their quickness. I think we've adjusted for it now, but it's still, they're, they're relentless. Doherty's not going to back down. So they're not, they're not getting, when we had it to three points, you know, they, they, they held their resolve. They got it back up to seven. So it's like, we, it's like we're chasing the game, similar to the Lexington game. We keep chasing, just can't get over that hump yet, you know? And here you get a look at the Arlington High School cheerleading squad. Let's run down their roster, coached by Sarah List and Emily Duke. The captains are senior Michaela Edwards and Keeley Smith. Junior Maya Tess is also a tri-captain. Two other seniors are on the squad, Meg Consolo and Amelia Lipman. There are six freshmen on the squad, Bobna Kumari, Brooke Mayer, Abby Whiting, Lydia Scher, Catherine McDonald, and Mia Cochran. Four sophomores are Lily Roshankish, Jill Cole, Ina Bared, and Haley Lucente. And the juniors are Lauren Henneberry, Haley Dow, Lizzie Hink, Gracia Valdez, Rhee Ann Lyons, Ryan Lawless, and Angelina Cristobal, the Arlington High School cheerleading squad. Shout out to them and all their great work this season in the home finale. We have an interesting situation with Arlington, whether they'll have another home game or not this season. We'll touch on that in a little bit as we begin the fourth quarter, Arlington down by six. Nice little pocket pass there inside. Tough shot, no, but he keeps it alive and gets his own rebound. And before that, call put that back Alexi, shot. I think. Well, let's hope so. It's on 12. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe 23. I saw a two up there. I think they called that on Caden. I really do. Okay. 
again, we don't keep, haven't done a good job myself keeping track of individual fouls, but I know of at least three on Caden. If that was on Caden. New shot clock for the Highlanders. Arlington in the zone. Long three. No good. Good rebound, pull it. Oh, oh, that's gonna be theirs. Yeah. yeah, it's off James's shoulder. Yeah, he had it for a moment, just couldn't quite corral it, and it rolled off his arm out of bounds. Darty ball. But that's what you want. You want him shooting threes, right? You don't want him taking to the I hole, do. getting clean looks. Yeah. So. Didn't get the rebound, maybe we'll get it next time. I don't it's think he touched play. it. Legal play, legal play. Yeah, he didn't touch it. Even if he touched it, it would have been a legal play. So make them stagnant on O. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Is it like Caden or Jack? I hope it's on Jack. That looks like Caden Mills picks fourth. up that foul. I think that's four on him. I really do. Yeah. Coach Woods checks to the his assistants. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he's got to get him out for a little while. He's going to put Peter Clarity back into the Allenton lineup. Yeah. As uh, Coach Woods went to his staff to see how many he had and got the word that that was foul number four as assistant coaches Mike Palladino and Matt Woods there. And speaking of Coach Matt Woods, he's the JV coach, and the JV's won today to improve their record to 15-3. and three. So the future looked good for the Spy Ponders. They have a bunch of young players in this team, only two seniors, and quite the JV squad. Long three, rebound. no. Got to get that rebound. But again, I'll there you go. This time they good secure ball, good it. Ball. And a rebounding foul will be called against Doherty. Yeah, if this if the fouls keep getting called at the rate they are, we're going to be in the bonus maybe with three minutes to go. So that could play a factor down the stretch. Pat Dowd picked up that foul. First thing, oh, he had it by the shirt. Unfortunately, no official could see that, but Peter does a great job challenging it. Now Dowd with oh, the put back no, and they're going to get Allenton for a foul. So unfortunately for the officials, from where we were, on that last play that you could see a shirt grab. Yeah. And uh, that's what caused the turnover, unfortunately. Now Coach Woods getting an explanation on the calls. The first free throw by Dowd is no good. Six and a half minutes remaining in the game. Arlington down by six. That Neither team out. has scored in the first minute and a half. Uh, good job there by James, oh. but then a nice play by Dowd. Oh. And now out of bounds off of Arlington. Wow, Dowd kind of hid in the weeds yeah, there. Yeah, he did. He was, he was, I think, yeah, he was guarded by Fudge, so he couldn't see him. Yeah, and James was just trying to make a little bit of an outlet pass, and Dowd was in the weeds, as I just said, and uh, he picked off the pass. And then the ball went off of Arlington to further make things worse for the Ponders. Doing a good job of denying the entry pass. Got to Three point shot rolls around and up, but the put back, no rebound again, put back up and in. And again, three chances for the Highlanders. And Joshua, Josiah Reyes has the bucket. 16 for Reyes. Arlington now down by eight again. I think the closest they got it was four, maybe three. Another steal on the double team. And laying it up and in. I hope Coach Woods might have to use that fourth time out. Walker with the steal and the lay-in. Yeah, I think he's gonna let him play through it. 10 point Arlington deficit now. Five and a half minutes to go. Dingman on the drive, double team knocked it away. And now Peter Clark is gonna be called. Oh, it's be, three on Peter, right? It'll be four. second down for Darty after the <laughs> clean blindside hit by Clarity. That's three fouls, team fouls on Arlington. Not even halfway through the quarter yet. Yep. Well, there's some discussion about who that foul was on. It was clearly on Peter Clarity. Yeah, mm -hmm. Doherty's playing an interesting defense where they have almost like a like a rover, right? So they're looking like they're playing man, and then they have somebody who's playing on the perimeter to double team. And you saw the turnover there by Peter and then the turnover in previous possession. So good challenge there by James Dingman. But Don't again, reach over. Wellington unable to get that defensive rebound. And Ryan Dennis lays it in for the Highlanders. I mean, Doherty's shooting a worse percentage than Arlington, most likely, and they're winning by 12. The second and third you know, chance so points. Second and third chance points. Yeah, wow. You look up at the scoreboard and you're right. All of a sudden, Arlington down by a dozen. 
Allington has yet to score. See, there, that's the, that's the. Ooh, let's see if James is okay. It was a pretty hard foul yeah. there committed by number 15, Pat Dowd. And James but, but you notice that's the same thing. When James drives, there's a second defender that comes up and then they are attacking and aggressive on those doubles. So. Second team foul committed by Doherty. I mean, you gotta give them credit for the way they're playing. They're, they're well disciplined, communicating on D, their help defense is strong, so. But the thing is, if there's two players on one, then somebody's gotta be open. So it's like, it's almost like we have to anticipate the second person defender coming over and then where are you gonna go with the ball? And it's like one pass, two pass layup. So sounds a lot easier in theory than it is in practice, but. Let's do a quick update on the remaining schedule for the Spy Ponders. Of course, this is a non-league game against Doherty, but there was a game early in the season that was snowed out against Melrose. So Arlington will go to Melrose on the 19th. So that is, what, Monday? Mm -hmm. And they'll play their final game of the season. And nothing really major at stake, just the Middlesex League title on the line. <laughs> as Arlington and Lexington are tied for first at 11-4. Arlington plays at Melrose on Monday and Lexington Watertown, at right? Watertown. Yep. So I would think that Lexington would have the, what did we do against Melrose early in the season? Do we, is that, on no. the, they're on the other side, we only play them we once? We only play them once, yeah. All right, so I don't know anything about Melrose. I know Watertown's always a tough team, although Arlington handled them pretty easily here at home, quite honestly. Right. So um, if they both win, they'll share the Middlesex League title. If they both lose, they'll share the Middlesex League title, I think. Um, and hopefully uh, Watertown can knock off Lexington, Spy Pondus beat Melrose, and we'll win the league. And we'll talk about the tournament on our next break. Caden Mills just says, I'm going to the hole. Couldn't get it to drop. Strong move there by Caden, but unable to convert. Yeah, we need a bucket. We need to stop here. And our lead is starting to be extended by Doherty High School. Up by 12, they're gonna take a little bit of air out of the ball. Now Reyes is gonna go take a little back step shot. Tough shot. Over the back, and it's us. that's going to be Dowd on the foul. Team foul number three, three against the Highlanders. Arlington with four, so Arlington in a little bit of team foul trouble as well as they will be over the limit on their next foul, and Darty will shoot free throws. The big fella, Dean Pullman, back into the Highlander lineup. Right now for Arlington, it's Lincoln Fudge, James Digman, Caden Mills, Peter Clardy, and Alexei Tripotsis, and uh, Lincoln has been silent here in the second half. He hasn't really had touched the ball at all. I don't know if they're making a concerted effort to keep him away from it, perhaps, but he hasn't had more than two or three shots. Dingman on the shot, no, he's fouled on the play. Yeah, I think he ended the first half with nine, and he has two buckets in the second half, so he's got 13 for the game. And, um, yeah, just, just uh, I think Arlington in general, just the flow of the half court, it's been, it's been tough because Doherty's played really, really good defense. James Dingman will go to the line for two shots. Foul called against Jamal Walker. Four team fouls apiece, so we will be shooting free throws for the, durain, the du remainder of the game, the duration of the game. Durainder, that's a combination of remainder and duration. All right. A new word I just made up. <laughs> James hits the first free throw. He now has 18 on the night. Still plenty of time, over half the quarter left, so. If he makes this, we'll be down by 10, and he does just that. Coming up on the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Well, that's a good pass there. Um, as Ryan Dennis made a nice pass to Dean Pullman. Pullman laid it in. He's now in double figures for the game, and the lead back up to 12. Yeah, like I said, I think I'd play half court. Their speed is just... James to the rack, ooh, too much spin on that one. And now I think it's gonna be difficult, especially with this basket by Doherty, and now it's a 14-point game. Ryan Dennis snuck ahead of the pack and had the easy lay-in. I think now with under four to go and down by 14, Allington really has their work cut out for them. Allington has only scored two, those are the first two points of the, sec of the third quarter for Allington. This game is pretty yeah. close to being over now. Coach Woods takes a third, a fourth timeout. And the Doherty Highlander faithful that traveled here to the Toslowski Gymnasium starting to whoop it up a little bit. They yeah. lead by 16 with 3.23 to go, and it's going to be really tough for the Ponders at this point. Yeah, it's tough sledding. I mean, when, you, when you're in single digits and there's you know less than five minutes, that's kind of where you want to be. Eight is usually the max. 
But um, 16 to overcome in three minutes and 23 seconds. I'm old enough to remember Isaiah Thomas versus the Knicks <laughs> in 1981, I believe, in Joe Louis Arena. Scored 16 points in a minute and 13 seconds. Famous game against Bernard King, taking it way back to the 80s. Ooh, he could play. <laughs> yeah. And the Knicks eventually won that series, so. Nice little routine here by the Arlington cheerleaders. Thank you to our camera people for getting them in the action. But again, Arlington, you know, they've had their moments this season where they've struggled offensively, and, you know, you, you, you're down by six entering the fourth quarter. They've only scored two fourth quarter points. Those free throws by James Digman, the only points in four minutes and 37 seconds of fourth quarter action. Yeah. They just need that. It's, you know, they have Lincoln and they have James. They could use that one more score, I think. Just to take some pressure off of them. And James comes up with the loose ball, gets it to Lincoln in the corner for three. It looks like it's going to be short. It is. This will be us. Oh. Oh, nope, last touch by Arlington. Doherty basketball. Yeah, now, let's, now you see him starting to press a little bit. Keep playing hard, keep playing through it. Oh, now just oh, Doherty kind of doing what they want right now. As Ryan Dennis, he's come alive here in the second half. He's up to 12 points. They've had, they have four players in double figures right now do that Doherty Highlanders. A steal by Dennis. They got a player ahead of the pack. Let's see if they try anything fancy here. Nope, they're going to take the safe two. Number five, Prince DeCooley lays it in. And now Allington will take their final time out of the game. As this game yeah, I think he's going to clear the bench over. now. He's clearing the bench. I think he might, yeah, down yeah. by 20. With 2.40 to go, final home game of the season and at least regular season. And we were starting to talk a little bit about the remainder of the season. I mentioned what's left with the schedule in the regular season. Now, come tournament time, it all depends on how many teams make the tournament. Right. Allington well, right now is number 24 in D1. Right. At that point, they might avoid the preliminary game, which is the game that Arlington would host. They got to finish the top 32 to avoid the preliminary round, though. So I don't, I'm not sure how the rankings will, this, how the rankings will be affected by this loss to a D2 team in a non-league game. Right. Um, but they got to finish in the top 32 in order to avoid that preliminary round game. Yeah, Coach, Last, would, Coach would seem to say if they move, if they got up to like the top 20 or 23, they would definitely avoid the preliminary round. 24, I don't know. It, it, like I said, Kevin, I think it depends how many teams make it. So, right. you know, if there is an early round game, Allington would host. Right. If there is not, this, like I said, this could be the final home game of the season. So let's check the Allington lineup in there right now as Coach Woods has brought in some of the reserve players. You have number four, Jonas Burrell. You have number 32, that's Nick Rudolph. Number 13 with the basketball there is Thomas Wright. Number 11 is Simon Miller. And number, f uh, who am I missing? It looks like uh, 20, Cameron 20. Levine. Yep, Cam Levine, thanks. That's why I'm here. Hey, right, appreciate you. Jump shot hits the top of the backboard. That's inbounds players, and now putting right. it back up and in is Nick Rudolph for two. Nick Rudolph's yeah. a big guy. I yeah. wonder if they could get some more out of him next year. He's a junior, and he looks to be at least, what, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, good sized kid. Well, it's great to see everybody play, because yep. these kids work hard. They work hard in practice, so. It's great to see their efforts rewarded with some, with some time on the floor. Now Coach Chavis, not so much res um, with the reserves. The shot is blocked. Rebound put back is up, no good. Now they have a player ahead of the pack. And they're going for the high lob Good passing. hustle by Cam. Good hustle. Way to block shot that out. By Cam Levine preventing the alley oop dunk. You don't want anybody dunking on your home court. And now Doherty will take a timeout. I would imagine this timeout yeah. is with the purpose of getting some of his players in. And maybe the coach was a little um, displeased with that because he's like, all right, guys, we got it in the bag. No, no need for hot dog. And I saw him have a, have a bit of a comment there. Right. So now he seems like he runs a tight ship. I got a chance to talk to him before the game. Seems like a nice guy. He's been the head coach for 15 seasons. And uh, this is a pretty good team, number 14 in D2. Yeah. Um, you can't always go by the record. So, you know, yeah. you look at the look at the team sheet and you say 9 and 7, like, oh, well, you know. They might play in a tough league. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned the league to me, and I didn't recognize it. I didn't write it down. That was my mistake. Um, but it must be a league out there, out in the Worcester area, obviously. And um, who knows? Maybe they play in a league. You know, there's some teams, say, in the um, dual county league, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, you play in teams like Acton, Boxborough, Lincoln, Sudbury, but you might be Westford Academy and 
and I'm not sure what Westford Academies these days are. Western yeah. High School, I think Western High School might be Division Two or Three in some sports, and I'm assuming basketball as well. So you have to play those hard league games. So that's probably why with a nine and seven record, they're ranked as high as they are at number 14. That's a pretty high ranking for it a team that's only is. two games over 500. It is absolutely. But I like the fact that they rank it now like that. And I'm sure it's on a perfect science, but back in the day when they just ranked it by your record. Yeah, record doesn't tell the whole story. Now you could have some team that plays in a soft conference and they're 18 and two and they might lose by 30 in the first round. Right, exactly. So indeed, Worcester does go to the bench. That's number one, Jamel Walk. He's still in the lineup. Is that some of the reserves are playing with him. He's a starter. Number three, Josh Romeo, also a starter in the game. So not quite a complete dumping of the bench by Coach Chavis, but he's got a couple other players in there. I don't see Ron McPhee in the lineup for the Highlanders. Ball's knocked out of bounds, and now a couple more substitutions for the Highlanders. Number 32, Jordan Bennett is in there. Number 10 is Juan Rodriguez. Number 21 is Jordeli Luna Morales. Number 23 is George... Criazes, I'll say. As, uh, the emptying of the Highlander bench has caused me some tough names to pronounce, but uh, we'll try to get through it as best we can. I apologize to the Darty players for any mispronunciations. Three-point shot there is no good. Rebound fought for. And, effort. Uh, Way to see the kids still playing hard. Darty can pretty much run this out, but they're going to take a shot anyway. I don't blame them. The bench players are in there. They may as well play. Get your money's worth. Yep. I, I don't know if we'll... 26 seconds left, I don't think we'll just... Simon Miller with a nice rebound there. Burrell dumps it inside to Rudolph. Rudolph kicks it back out. Levine gets it inside, they back out to Levine. Let's see if Levine can knock down a three, and nice. he does. Good for Cam. Cam Levine for three. All right. And now we have a whistle, and uh, let's put the ball back into play and count out these final 3.7 seconds to go. I can just hold it. Oh, yeah. Well, not the result we wanted, but better lose now than in the first round of the tournament, so. No doubt about that. Hopefully get a win Monday night with some momentum heading into the second season, and after that, everybody's 0-0. Zero zero. Let's get a rundown of tonight's scoring for the Highlanders of Doherty High School. Pat Dowd had four points. Dean Pullman had 10 points. Prince DeCooley had two points. Excuse me, five points for Prince DeCooley. Josh Romeo had two points. Jamel Walker had 16, tying high point honors with Jose Arias, who also had 16. And Ryan Dennis had 12 for a total of 65. For the Spy Ponders, Jack Sambardino had two. Nico Trapotsis had three. Nick Rudolph had two. Cam Levine had 13. Caden Mills had a nice offensive no, game. No, Cam Levine eight. had three. He had a three-pointer. With three, did I say two? No, you said 13 for Cam. Oh, Joe, just three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cam Levine with three. I was looking at, I know what I did, as I was looking at Lincoln, who had 13. Lincoln Fudge had 13, as just mentioned. Caden Mills had eight. High point man for the Spy Ponders with 19 was James Dingman. So as we mentioned, the Spy Ponders will go on the road to play Melrose with the Middlesex League title on the line, and then we'll see what happens there. Tournament-wise, they may or may not have a home game, but this could be the final home game here this season at the Toslowski Gymnasium. I'd like to thank Kevin Fudge and the ACMI crew here tonight doing a fine job bringing you this telecast. I'm Don Phelan. The final score here from the Toslowski Gymnasium, Doherty High School 65, Arlington High School 50. Thanks for joining us.